All right, guys, KB32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting in the Freedom Studios. For you guys new to the channel, uh, when I'm not at home, this is my home away from home, and this is where I can do some videos. I've got a review table sitting over there with all the lighting and everything, and I'm really excited about having uh, a permanent way of hooking up the camera so you're getting a consistent view. So this is cool. All right, so the purpose of this video, we're going to talk about the New York uh, new gun laws of 2022. Uh, yeah. I got a call from uh, John Crump the other day. Now, I'll tell you what, John Crump News, I'm going to put the link down below to a video that he put out earlier this week asking for some assistance. Now, I'm not going to allude to what that is other than he's looking for some people. And uh, there's a good reason for it. The things that are going on in New York right now are absolutely incredible. These people have lost their minds. And I just want to say this right off the bat. I know that working up in the north, a lot of times you are asked to vote a certain way based on maybe an organization that you're, uh, you are with, say the unions. The unions are pretty strict on how they want you to vote. I'm just letting you know from my heart, you don't have to vote that way. You don't necessarily have to go the way they are. There's a guy here in Pennsylvania named John Fetterman. He is probably one of the biggest socialists that I've ever seen in my entire life. He has no track record of anything that is success. And the only thing they can do is talk about Oz and his rich mansions and everything. Well, the thing about Fetterman is that he's anti-gun. He's wanting to let anyone, uh, I, I guess, he could let a third of the people out of prison. Okay, He thinks that's a good thing, and you will be less safe. It's kind of disgusting. But let's talk about what's going to happen is if you keep voting these people in because you're being told how to vote, well, guys, you're going to lose your freedoms left and right. And that's that's one of the purposes I'm talking about this. When you vote these people in, this is what happens. The same thing that happened in New York. Now, New York was one of those states where they had the not shell issue, it's may issue or cause, where you had to demonstrate cause as to why you needed a concealed carry permit, all right? After somebody made the determination that you qualified for a concealed carry permit, then you still had to go through the background check and all this other stuff. So after the Bruin uh, determination by the Supreme Court, uh, you know, the first thing you heard was the lies. It's just a total pack of lies. It was kind of disgusting to me and how they were making this stuff up is like, the less thing we need are more guns in the city. Now, you're not necessarily getting more guns. It just means that the government, the people who rule over you, the people you voted into office, are making a decision on whether or not you are entitled to a Second Amendment or not. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is if you continue to vote this way, well, things are going to go south. All right, so John Crump is asking for some help, and I told him I wanted to do this video on it. And uh, so what they're looking for is just a, a group of people. So I'll, I'll let you watch the video um, about that. But what I want to do is I want to, and I know this happened a little while ago, but I want to talk to you about an article that I pulled up uh, from the Democrat and Chronicle. Now, it's interesting to me is that these individuals, they all sit around and they are in so impressed with themselves that they created uh, a set of laws that prevent you from protecting yourself. These are not laws to uh, put criminals behind bars. They're, they're laws to keep you, the law-abiding citizen, from exercising your Second Amendment right, protecting yourself from individuals out there who may cause you harm. And the sad thing about it, when you've got somebody like the district attorney, Bragg, up there in New York City, uh, well, you know, you can shoot a cop and be out that same day because you're, well, it's, it's, it's disproportionate that people in jail are minorities. Okay, I'm not even going to go there. So I want to read this article to you, okay, from the Democrat and Chronicle. The bulk of New York's gun laws passed in the wake of a related Supreme Court decision this summer going to affect Thursday. That was last Thursday. Launching a full-scale overhaul of the state's current measures to restrict access to firearms. Now, let's say launching a full-scale overhaul of the state's current measures to restrict access to firearms. They're not trying to restrict access to criminals who may cause harm. They are engaging this whole system with you, 
all right, the law-abiding citizen. The new laws, some of which will kick in on Sunday, impose a slate of new restrictions on those applying to carry a gun, including new training requirements, a review of the applicant's social media, and detail a number of areas where carrying a firearm is banned, including churches, parks, festivals, and most private businesses. Times Square is all among the gun-free zone. Do you, do you know if a criminal that's going to cause you harm is going to give two crats ass if they've got the big no-gun signs up? Uh, yeah. And, okay, so... <laughs> uh, and in this week's, officials discussed temporary signage that would go up in the iconic New York City area to remind residents and visitors of the new laws. And that's reminding you of that. But once you're busted or they can see that you're carrying, you know, they, they jumped on everybody's ass about the, the uh, what is it, uh, frisk? The, what is it, the, no, the frisk law where they could stop you and frisk you if they needed to, if you were a uh, suspect of carrying a firearm. That was unconstitutional. But now what they've done is they've replaced that with putting signs up. And if you get busted, it's a Class E felony. Laws passed during the legislature session, including requiring permits for semi-automatic rifles. That's in other words, as part of purchasing a pistol in New York. Correct me if I'm wrong. I talked to uh, Phil 70, 1776 the other day, as well as Bald and Curious. And they are just up in arms. Ethan Manning, a good friend of mine, mine Manning and Sons, Manning and Sons called me after he talked to a gun dealer in New York because he was having to transfer a gun over there. And this is the most ridiculous set of laws. They're unconstitutional as hell. And I think that's where John Crump is trying to go as he's working with the GOA in developing a case, okay, uh, to establish that these laws are totally unconstitutional. Raising the age to purchase those firearms to 21 from 18. These laws will take effect September 4. September uh, permits were already required to purchase handguns for those over 21. Uh, New York Governor Kathy Hochul speaks during news conference about the state's new gun laws, most of which go into effect September 1, an upcoming gun-free zones implementation of the Times Square Wednesday, August 31st in New York. Who gives a shit? Again, do you think criminals give two rats' ass about a sign? But just after the session ended in June, the Supreme Court struck down New York's proper cause. Okay, that's it. Clause which was used to determine whether an applicant had sufficient need to obtain a concealed carry license. The court ruled that it violated residents' constitutional rights. So in in response, Kathy Vogel and her whole, you should see the people who endorsed her. I'm going to put the link down below to the New York.gov, that website, and it's got a picture of her nasty ass sitting there with all her friends and people. Uh, Mayor Adams, a law enforcement officer, you would have thought he would have been a little bit of a side, but evidently he doesn't like Mexicans either. In response, Kathy Hochul vowed to further strengthen New York's laws around guns, saying that it was a deeply disturbing day when the ruling emerged. People be walking around. They lied. They just told everybody, oh, we don't, people are going to be running around with guns. It'll be like the wild, wild west. <laughs> I'm not even going to go into the mass murders of Buffalo, Tops, grocery store, blah, blah, school, Uvalde. They have to bring that up so that they can justify the ends to their means. So what they'll do is for your safety. So they're going to take away your rights just to further their safety. She later called the legislature back in Alb the, called the legislator <laughs> later back to Albany, where lawmakers passed additional laws around carrying and obtaining firearms in New York in an extraordinary session. Now there nobody, nobody's going to give any feedback because you got people in Buffalo, you've got people in Rochester, you've got people in Albany, and you got the big city down there, all full and loaded with Democrats. So they're overwhelmingly uh, over. <laughs> overwhelmingly uh well they have they don't have the votes all right so hokel reiterated her point on a view of a supreme court ruling on wednesday at the press at a time when we're having a national reckoning on gun safety that decision wasn't just negligent it was reprehensible it was reprehensible because you want to have control over all people not just some people all people and the sad part about it is you're determ determining whether or not somebody can actually have the ability to protect themselves. That's re re reprehensible, lady. The U.S. Supreme Court on Thursday struck down the New York law that restricted those who uh, could carry a gun in public. It wasn't that you can carry a gun in public. It's just that you, 
you didn't have to prove to them that you needed a means or method or a cause. Uh, counties residents gear up for the new laws. The measurement has been met with f fierce outcry from proponents of the Second Amendment who said they or t they target law-abiding gun owners while ignoring those who obtain guns illegally. It totally does. Uh, I'm just going to move on here. The fact is we're still considerably behind the eight ball when it comes to the man hours to do this. And he's talking about this sheriff, uh, Monroe County Sheriff Todd Baxter. As of Wednesday, the sheriff's office was behind by 600 applicants before the law went into effect. They're anticipating the new restrictions will add about three to four extra hours of investigation per application because they have to go through. they got to look at your Facebook page. they got to look at your Instagram page. They're going to look at your YouTube page if you have one to see if you are entitled to a gun permit. He stressed that he believes in training, and I do too, uh, when it comes to firearm proficiency. I, I believe in training just because I want to be proficient at what I'm doing. Uh, but feels the new requirements are confusing in New York and may be unduly burdensome on legal gun owners. Damn right. I like that guy. Todd Baxter. If you watch my channel, kudos to you. This is under the guise of keeping people safer. We had 81 murders in this city in 2021, and this law isn't going to affect too many of those, he said. Some of this is just not fair to the law-abiding citizens. And just before the laws went into effect late Wednesday, a Syracuse judge denied a request for a preliminary injunction on those laws sought in the federal lawsuit filed by a Schenectady man in connection with the Gun Owners of America, Inc. Uh, so when Joe Biden sits over there going, oh, NRA, I beat him. The R -N -R, I beat him. I beat him once and I beat him again. <laughs> The lawsuit claimed that parts of the new laws were unconstitutional. All right, so here's the thing. What's included in the new law, if you don't already know? Banning concealed firearms at sensitive locations, which is a gun-free zone, which would include houses of worship, schools, colleges, stadiums, theaters, parks, and playgrounds. All right, so in North Carolina, uh, typically you're not allowed to carry in a church. Nobody follows that rule anyway. Uh, Schools, not allowed to carry in a school. Colleges, I think some colleges are, you can. Stadiums, you're not allowed to carry. Theaters are not allowed to carry, but nobody follows that rule. Parks, they finally made it legal uh, where you could carry uh, concealed in a park uh, and playgrounds. Special events like festivals, anywhere you had to pay to gain access, you're not allowed to carry it. Additionally, concealed weapons would be banned from private businesses unless those businesses posted a sign explicitly allowing firearms. So say, for instance, if you were a business owner and you wanted to kill your, uh, carry your gun concealed in your own business, well, you have to actually post a sign outside so that you can, as a business owner, carry your own gun. Those caught carrying a guns in a prohibited places could be charged with a Class E felony under the New York law. Exceptions for carrying in sensitive locations include current and retired police officers, of course, on-duty security guards and military service members. So everybody but except the government. <sighs> that shit is, we got to get out of that. Okay, additional training. So applicants for license undergo 18 hours of training with authorized instructors, including 16 hours of classroom uh, to include on state law situational awareness for concealed carriers. That's in North Carolina. If you want to get your concealed carry, you have to do basically the same thing. You have to do this, the uh, completed the safety course, which is required in pursuit of concealed carry in the past five years to be eligible for those hours applied towards the training. All right, so they've got these expanded background checks, disqualifying criteria. I'd like to know specifically what are those criteria. Applicants who have documented instances of violent behavior or those with weapon possessions or alcohol-related misdemeanor convictions will be disqualified from obtaining a concealed carry permit. Well, no shit. That goes without saying. Background checks and assessments of good character will include a review of the applicant's social media. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. So, say, for instance, if you were uh, a MAGA Republican, does that make you uh, ineligible? You think about it. Safe storage guns must be stored in lockboxes in cars while traveling. The safe gun storage would be required in households that have that are home to children 18 and younger. It's kind of like uh, New Jersey's law, or I think Maryland's. You, you're not even allowed to have it on you. Uh, so what good is a gun? 
Background checks for ammunition purchases. For the love of God, these would apply to ammunition needed for guns that require a license for New York. Buyers will need to show their license at the time of purchase. So anyway, uh, this was a long video, and I apologize for the length. It, it, but it's, this is the stuff, and this is why GOA needs your help. Uh, I want you to watch the video down below if you would, please, okay? And respond to John Crump. The guy's a good guy, uh, and he works real hard. I love the fact that he is actually out there every single day. His job is to protect our Second Amendment. All right, that's it, guys. Uh, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Uh, support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. As freedom is not free. And I'm talking about the men and women in uniform who support our Constitution as it was written by our founding fathers. Y'all be good. I'm KB32, and I'm out of here. Boom.